How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to episode number 30 of the Flight Time Podcast. You know, with everything going on right now, uh, coronavirus in particular, the drone industry, I feel like in terms of new drones, has come to a halt. And I forget what episode it was, but we specifically spoke about this um, in one of our episodes. Like, that was the topic. And I think that we were looking at it from an aspect of like as if the virus wouldn't leave China, but it has affected the entire world. So it's had a pretty hard hit on the technology industry in general, but I think that what we want to do today is specifically talk about Autel. Ken, you've made a couple of videos on your channel about it. I haven't really touched on it, but I think you've got some interesting information to share. All right, so so check it out. First things first, let's let's start with some some context here. I put out a video talking about the Altel Evo shouldn't have been announced at CES, and that that was sort of the title. And people, there's two sides of the coin. People that are like, okay, good information, we're okay with that, and people that were just genuinely pissed off about it. So the reason why I made that was because it seems like every time Altel has come to CES the past two years, actually actually even before the Evo, we'll go back. CES 2017, they came with this pumpkin-like clone that had retractable legs. We never saw it. It it never even came to fruition. They came back to CES in 2018 with what we all know is now the Altel Evo. That drone didn't release till June of 2018. Yeah, June 2018. Yeah, that's when it came out and we finally got it in our hands after months and months of radio silence from Altel on whether or not this was actually going to make its way into people into the consumer's hands. So right off the gate, we, we've had some sort of like some issues with with logistics and just timing, like they've had problems with meeting deadlines, right? They're a small group. Um, I got wind a couple of days ago that Jeff Powell, the VP of Autel, who's been there since the start, since the introduction of the X-Star and their drone program, was let go. What's even more concerning too is the fact that Tim who's the head of their social media and was the big portion behind all their marketing, all the ads and all the, the social aspect of everything. What you see from the their YouTube channel, what you see from their ads when they roll and play, that was all Tim. He was, he was the creator of that. And before that, it was Andrew St. Pierre, which is also not there anymore. So they downsized that. Um, and people people need to know that there's a lot of shakeups in the Altel that we once knew and loved. It, it isn't that company anymore because before they were allowing the U.S. side of things like everybody out of the Bothell to sort of call the shots. And I think what happened was there was some disagreements on the Evo 2 release and China didn't like the outcome. And they decided they, they were going to make a change. And the bottom line is they want somebody who's going to be a yes, a yes sir type of guy. And just sort of drink the Kool-Aid, go with it. And and that wasn't Jeff. Jeff wasn't happy unless if things were to his satisfaction. And uh, they they decided to part ways, unfortunately. So Autel, for those of you that might not know, there's like two different branches of it, right? There's like an automotive side and there's a drone side. And uh, it seems like they have a much larger presence in China and their U.S. presence is very small. Ken, you went to their headquarters uh, and you said that it was definitely, I I, want to use the word tiny man. Yeah, I want to use the word underwhelming, but that might seem like a a dig at no, Autel. That's, that's, uh, that's, no, that's actually pretty accurate. I, oh. I don't even think they would probably be offended by that because it, it, it is, honestly, it's it's incredibly underwhelming. When you first walk into the building, you're expecting this grand you know, entrance and you're basically greeted in an industrial park. If you've ever been to any sort of industrial park or buildings, they're just sort of like you know these cookie cutter buildings. You walk in and there's some products in the front there and they identify themselves. And then there's just desks with computers where there once was a pretty large support team. Now it's cut down to maybe three or four at this time. Like when I was there, there was one person working in support when I visited them. And I think I visited them during the week, mind you. And there was one person and I can even tell you the person's name is Luke at the time was there. That so, was it. Uh, now, in regards to this whole entire shakeup, are they still going to have U.S. based support? Do you know that? I don't know. 
Um, I think right now it's too soon to tell if if they are. I mean, the reality is I think what's going to happen is China's going to figure out like, oh, crap, cat's out of the bag. You know, most of the, the rotor heads that that fly their product because because I, I look at it this way. I'll tell is a fan product. It's not like it's not a consumer. It's not the same product as as DJI, whereas like you're buying a drone. You think of DJI. It's synonymous. Nobody thinks of Altel when they're first buying a drone unless they do a lot of research. So I think they're going to end up moving support somewhere else. I think they're going to outsource it. I think it's cheaper and they'll get more. That's the unfortunate truth. Is that a speculation? It's it's a combination of sort of what we're seeing and just the inevitable future. I, I don't even know if they're going to remain in Seattle, to be honest with you. Wow. That's I mean, a shame. I, I don't I just don't see it. And they can and they can easily move though. That's the reality though, is they can easily move. If you saw this facility, I mean, they could just up and leave tomorrow and find another place to do the same thing. It's it's pretty it's pretty crazy though. You think about all of the arguments to buying an Altel drone and there's two that come to mind that stand out amongst DJI. It's American based support. Um there was another one, but I forget it now. Oh, no geo zones. Uh, so while they're still going to probably maintain having that geo zone, um, the fact that they're putting on this front of being an American company is kind of being, uh, it's kind of being exposed. I feel like the the veil is coming off. I feel like people are now going to be able to see that Altel is actually a Chinese company and that they thought that they were supporting an American company when in reality right now the only American drone manufacturer that like has like a name and a presence is Skydio which i this is this is unrelated but for those of you that you know maybe you're thinking about getting a Skydio have ordered a Skydio um, it looks like they're not going to be shipping for the foreseen future um, unforeseen future so they're not going to be shipping accessories or drones which that's going to severely hurt them yeah, and I, I think that's that's going to be a, a lot of people right now are going to be doing the same thing. Is that you know they can't just because they can't produce anything. They they've touted an American based product, and you know we're shut. To, I mean, they're saying that we have to social distance for another thirty days, which is going to impact businesses like Skydio tremendously. A lot of we're we're going to start seeing a lot of companies sort of have to walk away from things, at least here in the U.S. I mean, it, it, it sucks. It sucks because Look, Skydio is a great company, but they'll be they'll be OK. I, I, think, I think Skydio will be OK. I think they'll be fine because you think about how many people ordered those drones and how fast they sold out of different batches. I mean, phew, dude, they, I, I think they're going to be OK. Um, it says here at the bottom of the email, at this point, all batch two customers have already been invited to complete their orders. So it seems like batch two has been totally fulfilled and that they're going to proceed with batch three shipments once the lockdown ends. So they've gotten through the first batch and the second batch. And man, dude, we're in April basically now. We're almost in April. So they're only yeah, on batch it's pretty three. Crazy. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy to, to think <laughs> that. But I mean, you know what? I mean, I think I guess I guess I was a little bit naive when this whole thing first started happening because we were. We were in Vegas, you know, we were we were sort of exposed to possibly some of this that was, you know, and we mm -hmm. didn't know at the time we were at CES and this virus had been going on since December, right? Early December, maybe, maybe sooner, we, maybe, maybe, you know, for longer, we don't know, but we were around a lot of people that were from overseas, Shenzhen, Wuhan, because the vast majority of tech originates from China and CES being the largest show. You know, I know you got sick after that show pretty badly. Yeah. I was sick for two weeks. We were both sick tremendously. And I, I, you know, I've gotten sick from CES and it takes me about two to three days to recover. I mean, this hit me. I was down for about almost two weeks before Maybe I you felt already like have 100%. It. Maybe you're immune. We don't know. I hope. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I used to eat stuff off the floor as a kid, so I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm immune. You know, um, I, I sit here and I think about like the release of the Altel Evo 2, right? Like put put everything else aside that we're talking about with the shakeups behind the scenes. I can't believe that we're here four months after CES and there's still no Altel Evo 2. I mean, which, you, which which is comical because, you know, they even said while we were there that this isn't, you know, oh, it's not going to be the same way. I mean, that's the first thing I asked them. That was the first thing I asked them 
because I'm sort of like gun shy with their product because of the Evo one. Like that sucked. That was a ordeal. And you have people that are getting their hands on it, but they're not here. They're not from the States. They're overseas. And I think, you know, the problem is they're, they're getting them from an un, un, unlicensed, non-approved distributor. That's, that's sort of letting them go. And they're going to, they're going to be in for a rude awakening next week. Well, so, I mean, you know, you, you kind of have some of this information. Do you have any information about when the drone might be available for people? So, so, so my understanding, my understanding from talking to Zach today, you know, I got a call. We, we've been doing like more, basically monthly calls just about this situation is that the birds to use that term have arrived to the states have arrived to the states but they are looking at some issues they are basically choosing certain units to qa against a a potential issue and i think that issue correlates back to what the gentleman that wrecked the drone over in uh, sweden had which was where there was uh an issue with the uh, GPS. Mm. So that's that's what they're essentially um, looking at right now. How true that is, or if that's you know that's actually what's what the holdup is, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but my my guesstimate is that I was pretty dead on when I said that the soonest I think anybody's going to get their hands on this unit will be around the week of the 13th, April 13th. Because so, if if they if they release that order and they ship to distributors, distributors get them in their hands Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday, at best case scenario. Because these are going to take seven days to travel because of the batteries. You're looking at Wednesday, Thursday of next week, and then distributors have to print labels, package each of these, and they're not going to do they're not going to do like little drop ship runs. You know what I mean? They're going to package these, get them out. You're probably looking at getting them in your hands after they ship probably the week of the 13th. That's, that's from all the information I have right now. You know, I sit there and I think about how excited we were for CES. Uh, I mean, you know, there was so many drones to check out and with all of this going on, um, the only one to successfully ship was the power vision power egg X well, at least the only ones that we were able to get our hands on. And man, that thing has just been a mess. Um, yeah, dude, I, I think I've flown it a handful of three times. Two, handful of three times. I've gotten two of them, and both of them are broken, and I'm waiting for my third one now. We're not going to talk about that right now, but I think that it's just crazy how excited we were for everything to come out. And now look at everything. It's kind of been put on hold. Um, I, I can guarantee you we are never I, I, I will put so much money on the fact that we're never going to see the V-Copter. The bike. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say that. As soon as you start saying never, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're never going to see the V-Copter. Um, you know, hey, this was their this was their scapegoat. You know what I mean? Yep. This was their scapegoat. Um, a company that I think has been pretty, you know, transparent, though, has been X-Dynamics. I mean, I've gotten a couple of emails from them. They're, they're now slated for June. And I think that could be like their worst case scenario is, is June, just because of time frames of things. Um, and then, of course, you've got DJI that's sort of holding an ace up their sleeve with whatever whatever was in those photos. I don't know what they're going to call it or what it is, but they obviously have something, you know, waiting. But at this point, they won't release anything at all. They're watching us to see what happens here, because guess what? U.S. customers are their largest customer base. Yeah, it's true. They are not going to release a new product knowing knowing that all this is happening and that so many of their cl- customers can't fly or, or use it or maybe they've been out of work. I mean, we're in an economical disaster at this point. I'm looking back at your videos. I'm stalking you. And uh, I see on here, I'll tell Evo first flight. You posted this on, let me pull it up. You posted this on June 11th, 2018. So that would mean that the Autel Evo 1 shipped in in June, which was about six months after CES. And I have a feeling that Autel is going to be able to somehow beat that, meaning they're going oh, yeah. to ship past the six months. Like it's going to be maybe seven or eight months before we get the Evo 2. Uh, so 
we'll see the Evo 2, like the Evo 2 8K. I think that's important to say is we're going to see the Evo 2 8K in April. Like they're they're pretty hell bent on getting it into people's hands, but it's going to be April. The Evo 2 Pro probably won't be t- until May. It, it, and and that's and again, I say this with the caveat of depending on whether or not we have any other sort of lockdowns or restrictions imposed on us. Because again, we're sort of all at the mercy of whatever the president says or whatever this stitch, uh, situation dictates. Because right now, like this is more, I think the health and well being of the people who are delivering these packages are way more important than us getting them. Like, I think of every time I see a UPS driver, I'm like, these guys, you know, are, are like so exposed to all this crap. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. It really does. So the shakeup. Um, I think. Go ahead. Say that again. No, no. Go ahead. The shakeup of Autel um, has me questioning, and even the fact that now they're doing this with the Evo Two and how it's being delayed, it makes me question who the true second is in the drone industry. Because I feel like it's always been up in the air, but I think that everybody secretly knows that Autel comes in at number two. But like, it, it's got me starting to lean towards these other manufacturers, like. Skydio that's actually able to fulfill their drones and send them out. Now, I understand that all Skydio has... Go ahead. Skydio sort of reminds me of like the one wheel of the EV world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like they're, they they make this great product. It's really unique. It's top notch. Incredible quality, but it's sort of like that indie product that uh-huh. not a lot of the mainstream users really really know about. That, that to me is Skydio. Although... I don't know, man. I, I think if, if you give Skydio another year, they can probably overtake Autel as number two. They, You know what? And here's another thing, too. Like, we're talking about all these drones coming out, but think about the drones we have right now. Um, they're kind of stuck where they're at. And the reason I say that is because by now, if the virus didn't affect China and didn't affect the United States, I would have expected the Skydio 2 and the Mavic Mini to have some some considerable updates with some new features. Um, I, I know that I saw within the warranty of Skydio and their Skydio 2, I don't know if it was necessarily within the warranty, but it was somewhere in the website that I saw um, that during certain modes in the future that are added, the warranty may be... Um, may be disabled I guess is that the right word but basically like allowing you to take full manual control over the drone with no sensors and if you're flying in that mode well then the warranty is then um what is the right word voided voided yeah well and and here's the thing is I wonder if it's voided permanently after that or if it's only voided during the time of you flying manually but regardless that has that has me hoping that in the future they make the experience of flying the actual drone better, right? Because like that drone to fly yeah. with a controller, oh god, <laughs> it's it sucks. The first things first, the the signal, just the reception off of that unit, just it, it, to me, it's it's lackluster. I know people would be like, <laughs> no, it sucks. Just call it what it is. Right now, it sucks. Second thing is the, the the jerky robotic movements. When I would always go back and look at that footage, it, it was just displeasing because it had sort of a an unorganic feel to it. Like, you know, when I watch like a Sam Colder video and I'm watching him fly, like his movements are aren't sharp. They're they're just very like I don't know, I can't explain. It. It's just an organic it, it, it immersifies you into what you're watching. When I watch somebody fly a Skydio, it, it's like I don't know, the equivalent of trying to walk through a crowd and avoid people like you're constantly shuffling around. I don't know. It's just it looks weird. Yeah. Look, again, I'm not going to take anything away from the Skydio because it's a great drone and Skydio stepped up and they were I mean, they were a little bit late on some of the deadlines that they met. But it is it is nothing like what Altel is doing to everybody right now. No. Um, The Altel is this drone. I mean, you know, the Evo one I was kind of excited about. But the thing is, is like it was kind of copying what the Mavic Pro did. So I wasn't too crazy excited about it. But like the Evo 2 is the first drone from Autel that I'm incredibly excited about for all the features that they added. I mean, they really they really said, you know, we don't care about how big this drone is or how it looks. We're going to give you guys all the features, all the obstacle avoidance sensors you need. 30, what is it? 35, 36 minutes of flight time. So so you you get 40 minutes. You get 40 minutes of flight. But yeah. 
reality is you're probably going to get you're probably going to get realistically like 35 minutes of flight real time but still so much better than before now the batteries are a lot more expensive than the one like 226 bucks for these batteries so i hope for that price that they've at least improved some of the the cells because i just had two batteries die on my evo one mm. and what's what's interesting on altel's batteries is when you have a damaged battery it attacks it immediately and it will not let you fly with the damaged battery as DJI's it should like right dji batteries are like yeah no you want to fly again go for it R- roll the dice but Altel's batteries are like, no, 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 you're going to land this. And once you land with the damaged battery, it does not let you take off again. Good. Which I th- which I thought is interesting. And, and what they do is they basically have a tolerance that's built into the batteries that it monitors for that tolerance. And when you go past that point is when it's considered damaged. So um, good, good on them for having that safeguard. But also, you know, I'm, I'm leery at the fact with them now with all these shakeups And, you know, they sort of do this to themselves because they don't do enough to stay ahead of speculation. They don't do enough. They don't have enough of communication. Whoever's running their social media department could do better. They should be staying ahead of us. You want us to watch your your official channels. You want consumers that are considering your product to only follow you for official updates. But then when information is leaked out and, and, and basically exhausted out into the internet they do nothing they just sit there in silence like seriously like combat with whatever is being said rumors or not and and write the ship and get out in front of stuff before you know guys like me or you or whoever tell people about it i mean that's that's you know that's damage control 101 you're talking about auto right yeah talking about auto Mm-hmm. Like yeah, they just sort of sit in silence, you know what I mean? Like their, their social media is just it's rough, man. <laughs> it is very rough. It is v- such a rough like whoever like whoever's running it, you can just tell like they didn't they've never they've never had like professional uh, coaching in that regard for how to schedule tweets or posts or things like that. I mean, I guess they're doing what they can, but still, um, we'll see what happens in the next six months. We'll tell you know how this drone fares, but. Mark my words, I don't think after the Evo 2, once these ship, that we're going to see another drone from Autel. Not for a long, long time. That begs to that begs a question of what is the support that you can expect moving forward, right? Because with all these shakeups, if if it's just too much to the point where Autel does go under and you purchase this drone from them, what can you expect in the future in terms of like support? Because I know, and you kind of know this too, I've bought my boosted board and boosted board went under and it's like, well, and nobody thought they were, I remember I was saying, I was saying that I was like going nuts for like three or four weeks straight. And I was telling you, I was like, boosted boards going under something's up because I couldn't get a hold of them. I had my board. I had a motor bad. I had battery bad. Couldn't get a hold of them. And then turns out they just sort of like just closed up shop and, and whatever. Now, now people's boards that are there that are getting repaired are owned by the bank. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a sticky situation. So you can imagine if like Autel went belly up by chance, which I don't think they will. I don't think they're going to go belly up because again, Autel Robotics is a division of the larger automotive and very successful scanner company. So, I mean, they have the money. It's not like they're, they're broke. I mean, it's like basically their, their mommy and daddy are the, you know, the rich, so, I mean, they could just borrow from here to pay for whatever losses the robotics division has. But the whole idea of being in business is to be in business to turn a profit. And if yep. they're not, I don't know how much longer the parent company will say, OK, we're going to we're going to keep honoring these losses. I mean, you know, the Chinese culture, they're they're all about honor. So if they can't pull it together, I don't know if we'll see a, a you know, Evo <laughs> three. Well, it would kind of be a shame because then you got to think about what's going to happen with the drone industry, who is going to take the reins and challenge DJI because, uh, you know, there, there's not the Evo is the only true like one to one Mavic competitor, in my opinion. And, you know, this Evo 2 is going toe to toe and is beating out the Mavic 2. But, you know, that with the Mavic 2, that's two years old and an Evo 2 that hasn't even started shipping yet. That DJI is just going to pull out a card from their sleeve and it's just kind of going to be game over. 
I mean, and, that, that, and that's sort of my thing. I think they, I think they already have that card ready to go. I mean, think about how much time they've had since CES. They probably had think an idea. Think about how much time of, they've had since the Mavic Two Pro came out. It's been almost right. over two years. Like they have, but, they have had all of the time in the world to develop their sure. Mavic Three and figure out exactly what it's going to be, what it's going to look like, what the specs are going to be, when they're going to release it, how much it's going to be. I mean, they they know all this stuff already. Yeah, and and that's and that, that I think is something that a lot of people sort of discount is the fact that DJI has sort of just been sitting back there, and and we would be naive to think that they you know because things are manufactured in China that they can just easily you know walk over to a factory or get schematics or specs or get their hands on a unit of a competitor to sort of dissect it and figure out what makes it tick so they know how to improve their drone or maybe what hasn't happened so it, it's it's going to be interesting to see but I, I just would say you know put on your calendars for around the april 13th and again again don't don't shoot the messenger that's just based <laughs> upon that's just based upon the information that i have right now and i said in my video like this this information is is constantly evolving what information i have last week is no good this week uh, and it's just because of the current state of affairs it just it really does suck but you know we're they're prioritizing other things beyond you know what people want i'm almost getting sick of talking about this drone just like i was sick about talking to the altel evo one i'm sick of talking about the evo two <laughs> oh, i know man i know i you know and i remember you and i both put out videos you know dear altel sort of videos and um you know shortly after that obviously we got ship dates and i ended up with it in my hands somewhat early um i don't think that's going to happen this year again who knows uh, but i am waiting for somebody to step up i would love to see unique come back into the fold and do Bro, something just don't great even, don't even that's like wishing upon the devil uh, well i'm gonna call his name because you know somebody needs to do something with them because they've sort of hidden they've they've sort of been sitting back there and not really doing anything they're just they're so, like they're so infatuated with competing with like the mavic air which is like three years old at this point like come on do something yeah, different. i don't know i don't know what's i don't know what's up with the developers i like I'm not well, sure what's up with the developers it's it's really is just I, I don't know. Do, do you think that in the future, could you see Skydio making a drone that isn't entirely based around autonomy? Could you see it? I think they're going to have to. I think if they're, they, they got to decide what they want to be. Are they a drone company that is making smarter drones? Are, or are they a software company that is building things that fly? I mean, they sort of have to, they sort of have to decide what they want to be. Because what I think they don't understand, you know, from the brilliant minds at, in their their offices over there in Palo Alto, is that a pilot wants to pilot the drone. Because in the idea of a human, we nobody makes a better decision than a real pilot or somebody behind the sticks, right? Nobody's yep. going to make a better decision. So I think if they can put some of that control back into our hands and then also decide, you know, what, what are these drones going to look like? I think there's a big, uh, there's going to be a big push for them in the commercial space, but they have to build something that has far less limitations to be able to fly because obviously right now we've already seen some of the limitations with lighting scenarios, uh, reflective surfaces. So they have to sort <laughs> of remove, <laughs> you know, well, dude, I've seen a lot of them dive bomb lately. So it's not just yours. I've seen a couple of like if you Google Skydio dive bombs water. I mean, yours is right up there. But then just beneath that, there's there's others that have experienced the same thing. Jeez. So, you know, it's it's they've got to, you know, circle around those limitations. This is definitely better than their first drone. Oh, yeah. And it it's not going to be their last drone. Their next well, drone that they make is going to be phenomenal. I'm sure the, the Skydio or Skydio as a company needs to diversify. I mean, I understand that they're making this one trick pony, but if they can appeal to two types of customers, two types of people within the drone industry, the types of people that want to fly their own drone and the types of people that want to, uh, you know, have a drone that follows them, maybe even make a hybrid of one that at least just has, maybe instead of putting autonomy first, it's, it's equal in both respects to the point where it's actually fun to fly around by yourself. I, I'm all right. The Skydio isn't not fun to fly, but there's a lot of other drones out there that are better if you want to really have a drone that you can fly yourself. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the Skydio is fun. Like, you know, if you're going to 
you know, I'm not going to lie. It is fun. Like when I'm on the board or something, and I want to get some cool shots for like Instagram or something like that. That's cool. That's, that's cool that I can trust it to do that and know that I would say 85% of the time it's, it's probably going to come out unscathed, right? It's probably going to do exactly what I would anticipate it to do, which is great. But then there's those times where I just want to sort of fly it myself, maybe fly with a controller. I can't trust it to do that or it just does some really wiggy stuff that you're just scratching your head like what what made you do do that? And you can't there's no logs that you as a user can go in and say, okay, well, tell me tell me what the thought process was here where it blipped like, you know, maybe it hit hit a water or, or just sort of froze in its tracks or couldn't get around an obstacle. I would love to know what it sees or what it thinks, but we'll never have that information. Uh, yeah. That, we'll provide that to the end user. That back end view that they have that they've been promoting where the drone kind of does all these different computational, you know, on the fly moves. It figures out where it needs to go, the path that it needs to take. It kind of builds that 3d map. I wish I could see that cause that'd be pretty incredible. Like think about like, uh, within the flight logs, which the flight logs, first of all, aren't even available on that drone, which is no. a huge pain. And there's a couple of other things that really just kind of point out that it's not a drone flyer's drone. Um, but like the, uh, oh, what is it? The the flight logs, man. First of all, if you could see them, that'd be great. But second of all, if within that data, you could see that 3D map per, for each flight, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. I think I think inevitably they're, they're going to have to do some fine tuning. Hopefully, during this whole thing where everybody's locked down, that their developers are still going through and working on some of the, the software remotely. And that way they can utilize this time where they're not having to worry about fulfilling orders and worry about dealing with troubleshooting and things like that. They could sort of be proactive and get ahead. And I would hope that for almost any of these companies that they've taken this time and used it sort of wisely because as of right now, a lot of their customer service facilities have been shut down. They're not worrying about bug fixes. Well, now they can go through QA their software again, get out in front of things, fix the algorithm that they used to determine what obstacles to avoid and uh, hopefully reconcile some issues. It's, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see just kind of how the whole entire drone industry bounces back from COVID-19. Uh, what manufacturers are going to do to update their drones already out. And of course, the drones they have on the horizon, what's going to happen with those. I mean, you think about how outside of the drone industry with certain tech products like the iPhone, we always have these annual releases. Well, like now what's going to happen with that? You know, it's going to be have to be pushed back. Everything, everything is going, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking back to you and I, we were supposed to go out to NEB um, this coming up month. We were, you know, we were supposed to go out to Vegas again, and this was supposed to be, one of those events where there's a lot more film gear, like stuff that we would normally, we would be interested in and they canceled that. So a lot of, a lot, I think a lot of people are going to start pushing things online. I think this will shape the way we interact with events going forward. Mm -hmm. I think, I think eventually what's going to happen is manufacturers are going to see that having a brick and mortar event isn't all that useful and it's an unnecessary cost and they can just do it online. Same thing with Apple. They do this WWDC. They could have, they could always do it online. Sure, it's not going to be the same wow factor as having the press there. But you can do it online and you're still going to get the same turnout. You're still going to get the same event. Um, but I, I don't know. Hopefully this gets resolved somewhat swiftly. Things can start getting back to normal, you know, summertime. Hopefully we can start seeing some normalcy because this, this really sucks right now. Yeah, true that, man. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Autel um, and how this whole entire thing further develops. I'm interested to see when we actually get our hands on this drone because I've been looking for something else than the Mavic. Uh, one of the big things is like having a drone that doesn't have the GeoZone lockdown, and I'm not wanting it because I want to go and take my drone up in the middle of right. Manhattan. I want it because <laughs> there, are, there are times where... I'm you have authorization to fly. Yeah, I have authorization to fly, and I'm not able to fly in a certain area because of DJI Fly Safe. Uh, think about like little areas you can fly around your home that might be blocked off. One that comes to mind here in Philadelphia is the Eastern State Penitentiary, which was an active prison like decades ago. Uh, you know, it, it's been closed forever, but it's still marked as a prison. It's not even active, so. 
Um, it'd be cool to be able to get some shots of that, even though you know it, it's it's totally legal to fly over it. it. I I can just think about it, man. It has all these little offshoots of different like hallways, and being able to get a nice top down photo would just be so pleasing. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And you know, as we continue to have these podcast episodes throughout the whole entire quarantine, and you know, further from there, we'll continue to keep you guys updated on all tell. Ken's got, Ken has his ear to it. He's a uh, he's the all tell guy. So. Yeah, so if, if, like I said, if anything comes up, I probably won't do another video. I'll probably put out a post or something like that because it's just quicker and way more efficient, especially if it's just a tidbit of info. But I would definitely say if you have a pre-order in or if you've considered it, the 13th, just like I said in the video, would probably be a safe bet. Who is, it's going to be some point this month. Who is even taking pre-orders right now? Um, I know Zach's taking pre-orders. Um, he does that because a lot of dealers do that, and the reason why they do is because they have to pay Altel for however many units they ship. So, you know, I think he's got something like 90 plus units, which is a lot. <laughs> if you do the do the numbers on that, that's a lot of money. So he's got to cut a check for whatever their their cost is, not the actual retail, but the cost account. Um, so he's got to cut a check for that. So the pre-orders basically sort of help them gauge and you know, if you're in the batch of when, okay, we get 80 allotted orders when we first, you know, ship, okay, these 80 orders, these go out first, and then we place another order and have those in. So that's sort of how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of them, all of them do the same thing. So, and that money doesn't like, it doesn't sit in the owner's account. It just sits in an account pending for all tell. So once they ship, they get those deposits and bam. So his money is just sitting in limbo place. right now? It sits in limbo, yeah. That's wow. that's how you have to do it. Yeah. It's got to sit really in limbo. I feel really about that. Well, his money, his money is basically, you know, paid out to Altel. So once he has an idea of how many of these drones come in, he's got to cut a check to Altel. Mm-hmm. And they did it a lot, you know, they did it prematurely. Like they they did it prematurely. So he's sort of, you know, he's he's sitting on a lot. So I can people are like, "Well, I'm out $250." I would hate to show you what I what I've seen uh, <laughs> on how much he's put out. It would it would make a grown man cry. So just know like like he's like he's been on top of it. I know Frank's been on top of it. They all have. Like everybody's been Good. going through it with this. And it changes like on the regular. So I would just say just be patient and um you know, just know that there's a lot more things going on in this world than our drones. Yeah, it it's true. But, you know, as as drone enthusiasts, it's always going to be interesting to see what happens next. Altel dropped the ball and, you know, two releases in a row. It's just something to expect now at this point. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you for the next episode. Adios, guys. We'll see you next time.